Good morning, folks. We've got a ton of stories today from right here to deep space. We're starting with our star as the benign sunspot group crosses the sun. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star with that large active region inactive. Same sunspot setup is preventing all flaring activity, even with such a massive grouping. We do have some solar wind arriving at Earth, slightly more intensified than the ambient streams, and they're due to departed coronal holes. It was a very minor stream that caused only a slight rise in geomagnetic unrest thus far, but should be monitored today for more intensification. The coronal holes responsible, as I said, have already turned out. Meanwhile, it appears a large and powerful one is hugging the backside of the sunspot group, but it might be at too high a latitude to hit Earth. Let's come to Earth. Nice meteor shot from Brazil to start. The storms continued their trend in the eastern states and up into the mid-Atlantic. That system is moving offshore right now, but another is building for Wednesday. We'll do that forecast tomorrow. Mayon Volcano has been active in the Philippines, but now the Tal Volcano could be waking up as well. They had a seismic flurry there, but no official volcano alerts yet. Let's go to the science news, starting with an alleged birth of a magnetar. Magnetars are of interest for a couple reasons. First, their burst mechanism, even under mainstream science, is a gorgeous electric nod to magnetic science, and also because in a major cosmic blast like the stories of our ancestors or the lab results of Dr. Anthony Parrott at Los Alamos, Earth's L shells might behave the same way. However, the topic is marred by their not really knowing if pulsars turn into magnetars or magnetars turn into pulsars. Seriously, legit debate in science. Interesting look into trans-Neptunian objects and their moon satellites. This one we're looking at is one of the more famous ones out there. Highly inclined, slightly more eccentric and elliptical than the other planets, and it turns out it must be covered in ice to have such a high albedo, and therefore must be much colder than expected. Quick view from space of the Atacama Desert and the salt flats that prove she was once covered up by an ocean. Up next, we're going to Jedi and the satellite's first laser canopy results are in. It is able to pick out every branch, leaf, flower, etc. And they do an excellent job displaying that profile and offering the tilted view looking down on the surveyed regions. So they have discovered a bit of a mystery. Supposedly metal poor stars. Discovered to have anomalously high amounts of silicon, aluminum, and iron. The official explanation is that it must have come from nearby Nova, although they do not offer the possibility that it was those stars' recurrent Nova responsible. Most underrated possibility. Up next, folks. Literally a paper about cosmic smoke rings. Not ones you'd be able to see with your eyes necessarily unless you could tune them to things like 150 megahertz emission. But don't worry, we've got machines that do that for us, and it turns out that when intracluster plasma shocks hit an active galactic nucleus and cosmic jet, they puff a smoke ring down the line, and if you were so unlucky as to have been observing from down that line, it could just look like an empty ring with a dark bit in the center, confounding your scientific results. Wait, never mind. Last but not least, a couple geniuses came up with a rational and novel method for a new, better way to look for dark matter. They still didn't find any or the slightest shred of its existence, but was a clever play. A for effort. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.